So a little earlier, I was uh, digging around my shop trying to find something, and I came across the oldest tool in my shop. Well, the oldest tool in my shop, except for myself, of course. <clears throat> this, which doesn't quite fit on the bench. Anybody recognize it yet? Hang on, let me take the lid off and uh, see if you can recognize it then. How about now? Does anybody recognize this guy? Anybody? Anybody? This is a tube tester. This is the type that a uh, field technician would have carried with him back in the day. Um, a TV repair guy, uh, for instance, or anybody that worked with, uh, with amplifiers or whatnot, um, would have probably had something like this. So this one is a B&K Precision, uh, or B&K, uh, Model 707, which was a really popular and common one, actually. Uh, a mutual Conductance Tube Tester. So here's the Wikipedia article on tube testers. Um, it lists various different types, all the way from the basic filament con continuity tester, which you could actually do with just an ohmmeter. Um, all the way up through short circuit test, emission tester, parametric tester, and a mutual conductance tester, which is what this one is. Um, it actually tests the tube dynamically by setting it up in a circuit as if it was in its real circuit and uh, putting all the correct voltages on things and measuring the current. Um, so me it measures essentially the plate current it's similar to on a FET if you were measuring the source or drain current uh, for a given uh, gate voltage or gate current. Um, it's, it's a way of measuring whether the thing is performing at its specification. Similar kind of a thing anyway. Here is the actual tester or a, a, a close brother of the one that I've got in front of me here. Uh, the the B and K model seven hundred seven Dynajet. This one is slightly newer because it's got an LED readout here um, in, in this lower section, but uh, it's essentially it's the same box. Um, this piece here you could replace with any number of options. And this guy is saying that his manual stamped nineteen sixty nine, but it was made late sixties into the early seventies. I'll have to check and see what my manual says, actually. Hmm. Anyway, this is not a bad uh, article if you want to look it up uh, at tubesound.com or just look up the B&K 707. You'll find all kinds of stuff. Um, it's pretty popular amongst the uh, tube aficionados, even these days. Okay, so here's how, uh, here's how somebody would use this thing. Uh, the first thing, you need the book that comes with it. This one's been sort of rebound. But it has a list of, of all the different tube types that you can uh, test on this thing. Uh, and the, the settings and everything um, that you use to, uh, to configure the different dials, which, uh, which socket you put it into, um, the, uh, and... Yeah, that's that's the basics of it. Um, it's actually fairly idiot proof. Um, so you'd set up the heater voltage. The heater is the actual the filament, the part that glows. Um, and you can set it anywhere from one to fifty volts. Um, sensitivity, which basically tells uh, calibrates the uh, the the meter, the gauge, so that you get your good or question mark or whatever, depending on uh, how much current you get through it. Down in this section here, it's what they call a jet test system, um, which, and this one's got uh, a little add-on plate here. The the one that you saw on, on the web earlier had a slightly different plate here. Um, but basically, if you've got a tube that's not covered by the more standard ones up here, you can set the various pin connections to these sockets down here. Again, based on what you find in the book, and you can test those ones as well. So what should we do next? Should we take a peek inside? Yeah, let's do that before we fire it up. I don't think I've ever had this guy open, actually. I bought it secondhand back when I was working in broadcast. Um, 
just so that I could uh, check some of the lower power tubes in the transmitter. And also, at the time, I was doing a lot of uh, bar sound gigs and was encountering musicians with tube amps who would occasionally ask me if I could fix them. So this allowed me a little bit of uh, a chance to tell them if their tubes were in, in good shape and if they had a bunch of used tubes to try and match them. A lot of tube amps ran in class B or push-pull mode uh, for their final amplifier and uh, for that you tend to want tubes that have a fairly close match um, in in their amplification characteristics in the current characteristics um, just to get a, a little bit cleaner sound and not get crossover distortion and stuff so there's all the screws out now let's see if we can lift this guy out of here Okay, well that was unexpected. There is a screw through the back into this guy here. So, here we can see the underside of this guy. And it runs on a single tube here. And then just a whole bunch of wiring connecting the various switches and passive components together. So we got a power transformer coming in here. This uh, rotary switch is the voltage selector for the filament voltage, um, and it's picking those voltage. Hang on, let me un let me open up the. There we go. Um, I I got a different camera app. This is the same one that Big Clive uses, and I'm just starting to get used to the uh, being able to adjust things on the fly. So, have to bear with me a little bit. Um, anyway, where was I? Uh, oh yeah. So, oh, that's interesting. It looks like it used to run on a second tube. So this one down here is a 6BN8. Um, we can look that up later, I guess. But this socket here used to have a diode, a rectifier tube in it, but it's been replaced at some point with a pair of silicone rectifiers, AKA diodes. That's interesting. I've um, got a couple of lamps over here. One of them is the power lamp. I'm not sure what the other one is doing. Um, and a couple of calibration pots here. Another one here. Another one over there. Wow, all kinds of neat stuff in here. But it's almost entirely passive. Um, this transformer has a whole shitload of different voltages on the secondary. Um, that's all these light wires coming out this side and some over here too. And those guys are all going down to, like I said, that rotary switch. Oh, that is a custom transformer, custom one transformer from B and K themselves. So that's cute. So where's the line, the means comes in down here onto these switches. Then there's one of the primary sides of the transformer and... That presumably goes to the rest of the other side of the primary. Huh, nifty. Wow, so there's, I mean, there's lots to see in here in one, in one way of looking at it. But in the other way of looking at it, there's not much. Um, what are these? Oh, okay. A bunch of these tubes up here have ferrite beads around their wires, just basically acting as a choke to that down a little bit a choke to uh sort of like a really lightweight inductor just to get rid of high frequency crap i guess prevent oscillation um but you can see most of these tube sockets are all connected in parallel with various resistors just to get different uh different current limiting and whatnot on them uh and there's a few these sockets here i'm gonna show you on the front um where are those things there we go there's banana jacks there and there. Some tubes, the plate actually goes on the top, or connection is actually on the top rather than through the base. I'll see if I can find one in my collection and show you. Anyways, I'm going to put this thing back together quickly, just so that I don't do any damage to it, and I'll be right back. Okay, here it's back together again, and I've pulled out an assortment of tubes from my pile. Um... Here's one that I uh, like what I was talking about. It's got the, the plate connection is on the top. So you'd put this in 
Well, actually, where's uh, where's the socket that this one would go in? This is a six DQ six. 6BQ6, 6DQ6 would go in that socket, number 27, right there. So you find the orientation tab on the bottom indicating pin 1. You put that into there in the proper position. And then you would put that plate tab on there, and then you would fire it up. Now, once that's on there, you would not touch that, because that's going to be in the hundreds of volts for a lot of these tubes. The bigger broadcast tubes that I used to work with, the ones that you can get kilowatts out of, that plate voltage would be in the thousands of volts. Scary shit. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to mess with that one just because I don't like the plate voltage hanging out in midair. But I've got an assortment of tubes here. Um, and we can, we're going to look one or two of these up and uh, run them through a test. Um, this one is a 6AU6. It's a little amplifier tube made in Britain. So the the first digit of this almost always indicates what the filament voltage, the heater voltage is. So in this case, we'd set it to 6 volts. There's another amplifier tube, uh, 6JX8, or ECH84 is a compatible part number. This one is a Canadian branded one, Rogers. Anyway, this tube was built in Holland. Um, so it looks like the Rogers company, uh, uh, contracted those out. This one is Sylvania branded. Where's the part number? 35W4. So that one would take 35 volts on the filament and we can crank around here and get that 35 volts. Uh, what is that one? That one is a 3AU6 Marconi Radiotron tube. Um, so three volts, this one is probably designed to run in a battery operated radio of some sort, I'm guessing. And these two are a pair of six V sixes. These are among other things, they're audio amplifier tubes, date code fifth month 52. These are both RCA tubes. So let's actually test one of those if we can. I'm just going to clear some of this crap out of the way and... To use this, we would pull in the book, and in the book we would look up our tube. This one is a 6V6, so it tells us to set the heater to 6 volts. It, uses, it tells us to use socket 29 and set the sensitivity to 79. So we have socket 29, that one. Plug me in. Heater to 6 volts, and sensitivity to 79. So next, I guess, or probably first, yeah, let's pull that out. Just remembering that it's going to go there. Let's power this guy on. I hear a hum, and a soft, I see a soft glow coming from there. So one thing with tubes, and this thing is running on a tube circuit, right? Remember that? You have to let them warm up. Um, the point of that heater or uh, filament or whatever you want to call it is to actually heat up the emitter in this so that electrons start flowing. Most tubes are similar to the older style FETs and even the MOSFETs to a certain extent in that they're generally conducting until you tell them not to, as opposed to a BJT, which is not conducting until you tell it to conduct. So, um, the, to conduct electrons, you need a source of electrons, and that's kind of the heater excites the elements in there, and the uh, electrons pass through to the plate, um, which has a fairly high voltage on it to attract them. Uh, and then you use the control grids or screens to. So this guy's been going for a little while. So let's plug our tube in. And see what happens. Now we should get a glow on him at some point. And there, we'll just look inside the tube and... You see that little glow in there? Focus, please. 
See that little glow right in there? That's just the end of the filament glowing. So this guy's starting to get warm, so we can probably test it now. The book actually says which test button to use, one or two or both. For 6v6, it says to use test one. So, boink, there we go. And we have about just over 90%. So we can tell that this guy's pretty good, okay? Uh, it's actually, I'm starting to feel it's warm. That's good. As it warms up to full operating temperature, they're going to get, uh, they're going to get a little bit better, pass a little bit more current. So we'll pop his twin brother in. They both have the same manufacture date, uh, fifth uh, week probably of 1952. So we'll let him warm up a little bit and try him. Oh yeah, he's nice and warm. All right, so check for shorts. The shorts light doesn't come on, that's good. Test one. Push it a few times just to get, to make sure I'm getting good contacts. So this one is a little bit weaker than the other one. This is in the 85% range or 85 units range. I got to look at the manual and see if that's percentage or what. It's still good, but in a class B with this other one, there's going to be some asymmetry. Um, so you'd have to adjust the bias to compensate for that a little bit, unless you wanted that kind of distortion, but that's not normally the kind of distortion that a guitar player is looking for. So here in the back of the book is the manual for mine. Where's the date on it? Okay, so this one also says 1969. That might just be the manual print date. Um, but yeah, here's here's the manual for the thing. B and K Division of Dynascan Corporation from West Belle Plaine Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. And this goes through some of the math and some of the explanation of what's going on in the test. Um, oh yeah, here's here's one of those uh, multi uh, uh, dual triodes that I was mentioning, a dual section tube. So that's that's what the test one and test two does, I guess. Test one tests the first section. Test two tests the second section. Okay. Circuit transfer push button in the proper position, depending on whether you're using the pre-wired or the switch selection section. Ah, okay. So if you're using this part up here, ah, that, so that selects between this section up here and this selection down here. Okay. So what do we got here? We got a shorts test that tests bit short for shorts between elements. Oh, okay. I didn't do the life test either. The life test switch, which is over here by the power switch. You're supposed to turn that or flip that while you're pushing the test button. Okay. Oops. I didn't do that right. I didn't do that at all. It doesn't really tell you exactly what the numbers are other than more is better. I guess it was kind of uh, make it just a simple go, no go kind of a thing. So what else we got here? Different tube types. Par oh, the parts list. Dare we suggest that there's a there is haha -ha. there is the beast it's like a two-page schematic that's awesome so there's the socket panel and again they're mostly just all wired in parallel there's the two heaters yeah they all go in parallel mostly there's the plate cap there's some different bias voltages and then here's the piece down in the bottom it's just you can select the different uh different functions to the different pins and there is that uh, heater voltage switch that i was pointing out inside um that picks up all the different voltages from 1.8 all the way up to there to 50 volts i guess yeah uh what else we got here so there is the tube that's inside it which is a 6bn8 uh, and then there is the diode that was replaced with the silicone diodes. So, I mean, there's there's not that much to it. There's a shitload of wire, and that's the complicated part. But the actual circuit itself, there's not that much to it, really. And it comes with a proper schematic. 
when is the last piece of equipment that you bought that came with a schematic and a full parts list they just don't make them like that anymore that was a fun trip down memory lane for me uh dusted off some old memories that i haven't thought about in decades i hope you found it interesting i certainly had fun and it was kind of cool knocking the dust off some of these old tubes that i've got in my collection too well, thanks for watching. I appreciate that as always. That's, uh, I'm just always amazed at how many people actually show up and give a damn about what I'm up to. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for stopping by and indulging me in my little nostalgia trip here. I will I'll talk to you later. Oh yeah. Right. Somebody's going to ask Pioneer Harvest Stout from Farmery Brewing. Yeah. Okay. Bye.